table will not bite you, but nobody ever wants to sit here. But you do have some seats if you are standing and you don't want to. Thank you, John, so much for being the brave one in the room to sit all by yourself. Well, good morning. I want to welcome everyone to Fresh Start, and I want to honor your time. So I know some of you have been at Canton Business Club, so you've been up pretty early this morning. So thank you so much for um, coming over to support uh, the Cherokee Office of Economic Development, Fresh Start Mornings. I'm Lee Smith, and um, I work with our entrepreneurship programs there uh, with COVID to support folks like you. And one of the ways we do that is through our Fresh Start Mornings, and you are in for a treat with Victoria Stanton with uh, Breakaway uh, Bookkeeping and Advising, and you're going to learn some bookkeeping and budgeting tips. But first, I want to just give you one snippet about co-ed. I won't go in detail with it, but we're much more than just entrepreneurship. We um, have a diversified tax base because we want to create local wealth. So our ultimate mission at the co-ed office is to focus on economic development. And doing that through job creation, sales tax revenue, and hotel motel set tax. But then our main service areas. We want to recruit businesses and we want to keep businesses here. We want businesses to expand. We want people to live, work, and play in Cherokee and not drive out of the county to go to work. We um, have real estate and products. Do a lot with workforce development with our BPO Green Crowd and the skill trades, trying to focus with those high school students who may not want to go to a four year college and they want to go into skill trades. We focus on that, summer internship program, um, and a career fair every year, usually um, in September. Film. Film is big here in Cherokee, thanks to Molly Mercer back here in the corner. Um, she supports our film um, here in Cherokee. She's our film liaison. So if you have anything to do with film, want to work in film, know anybody in film, know that you can always call our office and talk directly with mom and she can connect you. And then lastly, our entrepreneurship is where we land here with Fresh Start. Um, Fresh Start Cherokee is our initiative where we have um, Fresh Start Mornings, um, the circuit, I don't know how many have been at Chattahoochee Tech from college downtown Woodstock. In the circuit, so Victoria, our speaker, is actually a circuit member, so she has her office there. But it is open to the public. Nice little coffee shop there, a circle of friends, but you can come and work if you need to get out of your house, away from the kids, or your dogs, or your husband, or your wife, and want some quiet time. You can work at the circuit or rent space from us. Um, it's a great little uh, community. And then lastly is NAV. Uh, North Atlanta Venture Mentoring Service, where we pair up with local ventures who are ready to scale and grow. Revenue producing ventures who want to work with a group of mentors to help them along their entrepreneurship journey. Um, and so that's our offerings there um, to help our entrepreneurship community. Of course, we partner with our city and our state and uh, our local counties. We're here at Re Reformation Brewery. Circle of Friends supports us when we're at the circuit. Bronson here with his fancy camera with Color Night IT Services, Corridor Publishing, Gerald in the back. Thank you, Gerald, for coming and always filming us and live streaming it for us. And then what you're here for? It's good to Woo-hoo! Again, she's here with Breakaway Advising, and she's going to give you tips on um, bookkeeping and budgeting. So I'm going to turn it over to her. But before I do, how many uh, filled out a little red card or turned in your business card for a door prize? How many did? Let me do it that way. Okay. Keep your hand up. Molly's going to come around and give you a little red card. If you have a business card, we can throw that in there too.
your name and your business, and we're going to pass the mic. John Clooney on the Asking Market. Uh, Jessica Helms and George Freshman. Okay. Andy Morris with J Gall. Greg Morris with J Gall. Alexia Ford with Fashion Organizing. Uh, John Stan, I'm just here to support my beautiful wife. Carolyn <laughs> Stan, mother of the two. Oh, oops. Zero for the portal option. She got here in Kane Studios. Cindy Thomas, it's me, Tom Baseball. Missy Green, before Miss Homing. Harvey White, I'm the education manager at the Street Charity. Dennis Lopicolo, Grizzly Sackwatch. John Baker, Independent Insurance Advisor. <coughs> Trevon Thompson, the Crossfit Realtor. Sorry, excuse me. Dr. Jen, the Georgia Chiropractic and Massage Woodstock. Oh, okay. Mike Sagan, Certified Financial Planner. From Josh, J.D. Locke, Morgan Marksman. <coughs> William Thomas with Golf to Grow. Kelly Thomas with Golf to Grow and your golf experience. Brittany Hag with the Little Silver Bar. Melanie Jones with Pupo Gardens. Rob Miller and Farmer with Pupo Gardens. Madeline King, Independent Transaction Coordinator, closing on that one. Thank you. We're going to go here with um, Hannah, you'll just introduce yourself to Dana, to the least of mine. I'm Hannah Garrison. I'm the Program and Events Coordinator at COED. Dana Hernandez, uh, also with COED, Project Manager. Elise Holcomb, Marketing Specialist with COED. And I'm Molly Mercer. I'm the Film Project Manager with COED. Mm -hmm. I think everybody knows this gentleman right here. Bronson. Oh, Bronson. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out today. Um, a little about me. So, by day, I am chaos manager to three humans. Those are my kids right there Amira, Anala, and Princeton. And the biggest baby, Paxton Bentley, down there. It's not so much a baby, he thinks he's a lap dog, though. Um, so, fun things to know about me. I thought I was going to be a historian when I was a kid. <laughs> I read 64 books last year, and I'm at 68 this year. Good job. So, I, I don't know when I have time to read books, but if it's sleep, or read books. I usually read books, right, John? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I am a diehard Game of Thrones fan. Any Game of Thrones fan? Woo! It's a few of us. Um, I was elected to my first board position at 13. I had no clue what I was doing at all and didn't really know what that meant. And then when I saw, like, actual real documents, like tax returns and stuff with my name on it, I was like, holy crap, I didn't even know what I'm doing. Um, I currently serve on the History Charity Board, um, as well as PR State Georgia and the Board of Commissions for the Historic Preservation for the City of Canton. Um, I used to be a small business, a small business mentor, both, both in New York and for my metro land. <coughs> I held ownership interest in Audacity Market with this crazy guy. <laughs> and during COVID, uh, I created an association for minority virtual uh, freelancers and virtual assistants. Uh, we have 4,000 members currently. So, you know, lots of free time around here. <laughs> so, some things to expect from today. Um, we're going to discuss the significance of budgeting in ensuring financial stability and growth. Um, emphasize how budgeting helps in making informed uh, decisions in businesses, as well as the significance of bookkeeping in maintaining financial health. So before I go on to the next slide, um, I always like to uh, do like one joke, either tax or bookkeeping. So the first joke is, ever wonder why the IRS calls it a Form 1040? I'm guessing. Because for every $50 that you earn, you get 10 and they take 40. <laughs> that, that 
team is out there. Being a budget-driven organization, um, I find, especially when I work with small businesses, that you're so bent home getting started and running the business day to day that you're not looking at the planning process, which includes your business plan as well as your actual budget. Um, you're so into your day to day operations and worrying about your employees and making sure you can pay them and pay yourself that you forget about the planning process. So, how your business budget is a strategic tool. When you don't have this tool in place, you're not able to make really good decisions about your business. So let's talk about these five steps. So the financial planning process. So budgeting enables you to plan your finances strategically, outlining expected income and expenses. Who here has a Netflix account? Okay. Who here knows how many Netflix accounts they have? A few. Have you ever gotten to like the end of the year and you're like, I've been paying for like four Netflix accounts. <laughs> yeah. You mean for streaming accounts or four Netflix accounts? Huh? For streaming accounts? <clears throat> no, four Netflix accounts. What? <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time, people. If you're not paying attention to what's going on, easily things like that happen or even uh, not noticing that certain subscriptions that you have, the pricing goes up like all the time. All the time. Like QuickBooks, who here has QuickBooks? Uh, they have consistently gone up a few hours, at least every six months, if you're paying attention. Uh, resource allocation, this is a huge one. With a budget in place, you can allocate resources such as funds and manpower based on priority and strategic goals. I see this a lot when it's time to hire your first employee. You're not really sure how much money you have to hire that employee or to pay them, right? And the resources that are needed to even onboard them. Um, hiring your first employee is not an easy task. You have to register with all sorts of agencies, both state and federal. Make sure you're paying. <laughs> So I'm laughing because he makes me do this. Um, <laughs> I make it do it too. Yes. Um, but it's essential for you to know the resources you have within your organization and how you can apply them. Um, expense control. This goes back to that Netflix thing, right? So budgeting allows you to set spending limits for various categories, helping control costs and prevent overspending. This is crucial for maintaining profitability and sustainability. So, setting your budget with expected expenses, whether it's subscriptions you need to be able to run your business, or, um, you know, just paying um, different things having to do with your business. If you're budgeting, okay, um, I know QuickBooks is gonna be $50 a month times 12. Um, the, the Adobe subscription is gonna be $45 per month times 12. And then you get to mid-year and you see that those expenses are increasing because of users, different um, aspects you need to use of the actual software. Knowing those expenses are coming and being able to say, okay, you need to adjust, rather than always working in a deficit, super helpful for business growth. And then, of course, cash flow management. All the time, <laughs> when I have my monthly meetings with small businesses, we're looking at cash flow anticipated and current. And we're looking to see, hey, do we have the funds available if we need them to be able to even take on more clients? Because more clients means more employee hours, means more hours for you. Do you have the funds available to do that? As well as informed decision making, both budgeting and bookkeeping provide the financial data necessary for informed decision making. Right? If you're not looking at your books monthly, quarterly, annually, you don't know what's really going on. You assume what's going on, but you don't really know. Here's an example of a QuickBooks budget. Anyone has their budget on QuickBooks? <coughs> nice. Yes, <laughs> Roman. <laughs> at its core, both crafting budget serves as a roadmap for financial experience. Uh, success. 
Just looking at this here, I don't know how everyone can see, if you can see it really well. If you look, for instance, at the bank service charges, down here on the end is the annual total, but if you're looking month to month, it's increasing. I would ask myself, why, why are our bank fees increasing? Is it something that we're doing? Is it something that the bank is doing? If you're not looking at the data, not only annually, but month to month, you're not gonna see those little changes. I mean, 234 to 245, you're like, mm, that's not so bad. 245 to 257 to 270, that's within four months. That's significant when you're a small business, especially if you're operating by yourself. Here's an Excel budget. Um, I just put it together because I know some people still use Excel. It's okay, we're here for you. <laughs> but keep it, because you have to. Bookkeeping, why? I hear this a lot, right? So you're running your business, and you might be doing the books yourself. So you're like, oh, I don't have to look at it this month. I'll look at it next month, and the next month goes, and then you look back, and you're like, crap, I haven't reconciled my books in like five months. Yeah, so let's talk about why it's important that you do this every month. Business planning. Accurate books are essential for creating realistic and effective business plans, helping set achievable goals and strategies for growth. Tax efficiency. How many people here have a tax professional or CPA that you only see once a year? Just once a year. Just once a year. Yes, show your hands. All right. When you come to them, they expect you to have everything together, right? So. If you have someone that you're only seeing once a year, they expect your books to be clean, they expect you to have the receipts in order because they don't want to deal with a big mess because that is very time consuming. Um, credit worthiness, accurate financial records enhance a company's credit worthiness. Um, anybody here went after PPP funds or the ERC? Yeah. You have to have accurate records, and a ton of businesses were denied because their books, whether they thought so or not, when you really dwell into the details, they were not running a successful business or a business where they were trying to invest those funds in. So more people got denied than these other funds. Operational efficiency. Bookkeeping continues to contribute to operational efficiency by streamlining financial processes, and reducing the likelihood of errors. Hey, that person who does your bookkeeping, or if you do it yourself, we're human. And QuickBooks is not 100% for when anyone's under that. You gotta double check that too. So if you're checking these things month to month, you should be able to pick out when there's errors or when things are categorized incorrectly and when funds are misallocated. And then business valuation. That's not just for those big companies. You should be evaluating your company every single year, whether you're a small business or not. Because, decide, because looking at your financial records and determining your business valuation year over year, you're able to say, are we really a half a million dollar business or not? Things that keep me up at night. So these are, I went actually uh, over the last couple months. I've been going to a ton of conferences. The IRS forum was one of them. And the top one, the Corporate Transparency Act, which goes into effect January 1, literally kept me up the night before. Like, literally kept me up. Um, this is going to affect all of us. It's not going to affect Google. It's not going to affect Microsoft. It's going to affect all of us in the room. It's a new reporting requirement um, for beneficial ownership. But the problem is, is that the person who submits this report is the person who's going to be liable for any uh, corrections or errors in that report, up to $500 a day. That, yeah, $500 a day. So I lost a lot of sleep over that because, one, I, I'll say this. If you make a change to your business right now, you have to follow the Secretary of State and do your, 
you know if it's an address and name change, this, you have 30 days to comply with any changes to your business starting January 1. So if you, business name, address, ownership, 30 days. And they're sticking to that. And every day after that 30 days is a problem. Um, IRS enforcement. So they contracted. I'm sorry. Oh, that's a question. Sorry. Uh -huh. The IRS enforcement, they injected $80 billion in revenue officers and in technology. That's something to be concerned about. Um, the Inflation Reduction Act, which extends the Affordable Care Act, which makes certain prescriptions um, a lot more, um, a lot cheaper for Medicare uh, recipients. It also reduces the insulin charges for 30 days, a supply of 35 dollars as the max. Um, tax breaks for electric vehicles. Anyone in here have an electric vehicle? Okay, so there's a new cap on that, on how much you can make per year if you're purchasing an uh, electric vehicle and how much uh, the tax uh, credit could be. Um, and then for clean energy, if you're doing any additions to your home, sun, uh, what are those? Like sun panels, solar, solar panels. Yeah things like that, they need to reduce those amounts, as well as the out-of-pocket cost for prescription drugs. But still, the last two good things, the upper four, not so much. So just to bring it to the end of my presentation, um, everyone, if you scan this code, you will get a small business bookkeeping tracker. It's an Excel spreadsheet. You can also download it into Google as well as a business and financial plan template that you can use for your business. And I have one more joke. <laughs> what is the difference between the IRS and the mafia? Good, I like it. Legal It's a good answer. That's what I What is the legal robbery? One's illegal robbery? No, that's not the answer. Oh, they didn't do that. One's illegal robbery. She's going to say, no, they yeah. didn't do Okay, so the answer is the mafia at least gives you protection when you pay. And the last one, this is really, this one had me really rolling in three o'clock this morning. Um, there was a man who computed his taxes for 1997 and found that he owed $3,407. He packaged up his payment and included the following letter. Dear IRS, enclosed is my 1997 tax return and payment. Please take note of the attached article from the USA Today newspaper. In the article, you will see that the Pentagon is paying $171.50 for hammers, and NASA has paid $600 for a toilet seat. Please find and close four toilet seats and six hammers. This brings my total to $3,429. Please note the overpayment of $22 and apply it to the presidential election fund. Thank you. <laughs> and that concludes mine. Q&A. You've got questions. I've got answers. What questions do you have for Victoria? Okay, so I'm not a CPA. 
I am a numbers girl. I don't like a count. Yes. Yes. So um, I am CHRM certified, which means I can handle HR items. Um, I'm also um, CRS certified, which means I can do risk mitigation. Um, and then I have a and that's your certification start again, I think, right? Very good. Yeah. yeah. So in my experience, um, I feel like I've combined bookkeeping with CPA. And sometimes it's difficult to get that attention, that monthly attention on your books. Uh, because the CPA is too expensive, we don't have time for it. Uh, also, that bookkeeping is really... Yeah. <clears throat> So, in my experience, getting the level of attention you're describing from CPA is more difficult. So, but CPAs are also charging like two, three, four hundred dollars a month to do something. <coughs> I guess just to balance your books every month. So I'm trying to figure out where you fit into this equation because I like the idea of giving that attention, but where, how, how I break away from CPA is maybe I only, maybe I only need to bring books to them at the end of the year. That's all I need them for. But, but, but some of them also offer tax planning like once a year. <clears throat> so where does this fit in? Help me understand that. Um, it's really based on the client, which is you. I don't think uh, if you have a CPA that you love, I don't think you should leave them. Um, it's just getting that attention. Most people, they see their CPA or tax professional only at the end of the year, or they give them a tax plan and they kind of walk away. So. I would say, think of someone like me as the person who implements the plan, who watches the plan for you, and calls you out if you're not speaking to the plan. Okay. Um, so my question really is, how do we get in touch with you? Like, how does the process start? Can I just give you my login? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my contact details, but yes. So uh, we would sit down, we talk about your goals, we'd see where you're at. We would see where you're at on your journey. Some people come to me and they have rece receipts and a Ziploc bag and they're like, hello. And then um, others come to me. <laughs> And then others come to me with, uh, you know, a QuickBooks that's never been reconciled. So I need you where you're at. Do you, do you work with zero? Yes. Oh, I'm zero to start with that. Okay. I like you. I love it. Oh, okay. So it's like zero. So it's a number it's another option. You don't have to go with QuickBooks. Um, zero is accounting software. Yes. Yeah. And I'm still, I'm, I'm like, I'm not that great at it. I, I'm like, oh wait, how do I do this thing? So, I don't know, I need to talk to you. Because I'm the same with you, I'm like, can I just give you the password? Um, yeah. Well, your question is, maybe not. So with that question, is it something you do, or do you offer just counseling sessions at the best of really ask? <laughs> like, well, I mean, like, if you have questions about how do you do zero, can you contact people? Yeah, so we do uh, quarterly engagements for like really small businesses who don't need that month to month, but are kind of learning their business in their own. So we would come alongside you and kind of support them. <coughs> It's a franchise plan. Okay, so go through a little bit more about that as well as what your goals are. Okay. Um, so I joined the Breakaway franchise earlier this year. Um, I had been building my own bookkeeping and tax practice um, prior to that. Um, I joined Breakaway because of the support that um, they share with their franchisees as well as I just love the brand and what they stood for. Um, so I'm still 
in the transition, transitioning my current client base to the Breakaway brand. Um, and my goals right now is to get the name out there and um, to support my local community. Um, when I look at what you have on the screen, you look like a whole package of services. Can you pull out one or two? Or are you basically all three? Yeah, um, we really work with the small businesses, what they need, what they could need in the future. So it's really, this is where you're at right now. I think as long as, as, alongside what you feel you need, this is what we can build a package together. Yeah, so um, there's some clients that work monthly, some that work quarterly, some that are just, just one the annual clients, and that's okay. Very customizable. Very customizable. is I would say drop this drop the fractional part it's a CFO part time so they're looking at high level your finances where you're going how to get there and then supporting you to get there um, whereas a bookkeeper is just kind of just doing the books um, making sure that they're clean making sure that they're up to date Anybody else with a question? So it's not good when you, when I reconcile my questions, if I don't like what the number looks, I say delete. Okay. Can't do that, right? Let's, let's talk. I say that, I look sometimes like, I don't know. Can you tell me what you do? Well, I'm not going to give you this big fat number.
to make sure it looks the way you want and then professionally print it for you so that it looks amazing. Yeah, so, so what that is for. Thanks, you. Thanks, thank you. Cool. Um, I'm Rob Moore with Tree Fork Gardens. We engage our community in uh, growing food and showing people how to grow food. And, um, and just, we really want to share. Um, it's not, not as challenging as many of you think. We've definitely killed more things than any of you have. Like, we've got to get out of the house. Um, we've got uh, some mushroom workshops coming up. We've got some Christmas gifts, what we're talking about gift giving. Um, wonderful day, and I love those sorts of things. So, um, yeah. You and Jesus should definitely do that. So yeah, um, it's a make and take thing, and it's a great time. We're like 10 years in to, to give the rest of our community. Uh, it's a sliding scale, making it accessible to everyone. And so we'd like to see you guys later on. We'll ask you to email and get the questions.